Paris. The father in the family had died, so he had lost his job. I thought it'd be ideal for what I needed. That was before I found out what a blackmailing, dirty... Blackmailing? You didn't tell me he was a blackmailer. Well, just in little ways, dear. That's all I meant, just the first. Well, you better get going. All right. Look, I just don't want there to be any recriminations. Now, I can't promise that our little secret won't be discovered, but if it is, I won't be the primary source. All right, all right. You haven't given me much choice anyway, have you? Well, as long as that much is understood. Excuse me. Nicole Cavanaugh's office. No, she's at lunch. May I help you? Dear Roxanne, I got your letter. I'm real happy you're okay and getting out of the mental institution. Only forget about hooking up with me again on account of I'm quitting my job and leaving town in a couple of days. I'm not coming back either because Gunther is heading for the sunshine like he always wanted. I ain't picked a tropical island yet, but I'll send you a picture postcard. In case you think this is just a lot of baloney and a brush off. Sydney's Tavern. Huh? Can you talk a little louder? You got my bad ear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, hang on, okay? Calvin. Yeah, what's up? You got a phone call, Copper. Uh, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> yes, don't you? Calvin, it's Damien. Oh, hey, listen, did you get a look at that letter? I got more than that. Calvin, I think I've solved our puzzle. I think I know how Gunther Wagner really died. Where the hell is Damien? Patience, Why is honey. He here? Patience, he is coming. From where? San Francisco? Will you just stop fretting? He'll be here when he gets here. Calvin, couldn't you just tell us a little bit about his theory? Jody, look, I tell you, it's Tyler's red wagon. He wants to pull it all himself. Well, where was he calling from? He was calling from Nicole's office at WMON. Well, maybe... Maybe he stopped to get a beer somewhere. Look, Gavin, I know Tyler. He doesn't play around when it comes to work. Now, just relax. He'll be here any minute. Mom. Nicole, my God. Hi, I was in the office when you called, and I yeah. wasn't going to be excluded from this, no matter what, what it is. What is all of this about, Calvin? Jody made it sound very good. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it is, Miles. Damien Tyler's on his way, and he'll have to clarify it for us when he gets here. Until that, though, the only thing I can tell you is he's got some information about Gunther Wagner. He says it's going to change all our ideas about what happened here the night he was killed. What do you mean, information? New information? Yeah, evidently, it's only it's an hour or so old. Where did it come from? That, I cannot tell you. Well, I hope it tells us who hit Miles over the head and knocked him unconscious. We all think Skylar Whitney did it, but we don't know why. I think I might know why. Well, it's about time you, you get been? here. Hey, wait a minute. Look, I'm sorry I'm late. I want to solve this thing as much as any of you do. Okay, Tyler, it's your show, so give us. When, where, and why. To begin with, Gunther Wagner perpetrated a practical joke both on Gavin Wiley and on himself. What? What are you talking about? 
Well, I hope to show you exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm going to have to use this. Okay, Tom. It's your show. Let's hear it. Who, what, when, and why. Okay. To begin with, Gunther perpetrated a practical joke on Gavin Wiley and on himself. Damien, what are you talking about? I'd like to show you exactly how it happened, but I'll have to use this. Calvin, I want you to put this on. Now, there are three pieces to this puzzle. The first piece has to do with a box of blank cartridges. We know that Gunther bought a box of blanks. We also know that Gunther did not have a gun of his own. That means he must have put those blank cartridges in somebody else's gun. You're talking about my gun, aren't you? The one I kept here. Right. The gun just like this one. Now, the practical joke was to be perpetrated on you, Gavin. So Gunther came into the studio, he got hold of the gun, he removed the live ammunition and put in blank cartridges without you knowing it. Sounds easy enough to do, I guess. Right. And then when you responded to the attack on Jody, which he did specifically to goad you, Gunther was ready for his little practical joke. Okay, Calvin, I want you to play Gunther. I want you two to get into the positions that you were in when the fight occurred over the gun and the shot was fired. All right, um, he had chased me all the way against this wall. I had my arm outstretched. He went from my wrist, put it up in the air. I wrestled down like this, threw him up against the wall like this, brought it down like this, and... Ah! Okay, now comes the second piece of the puzzle. In order to show Gavin that he was mortally wounded, Gunther used a little theatrical device. It's blood! It's fake blood. Now, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was not fooled by any red dye or... I mean, it was real blood on Gunther. Okay. The phony blood was enough to fool Gavin. He thought that Gunther had been wounded. He panicked and ran out of the studio. Gunther got up and changed his shirt. Now, by the time that you came in, Miles, that wound had become a real wound, and the phony blood was definitely real blood. Now, the person who was responsible for this was the person who was Gunther's partner in this little practical joke. He was waiting for this whole thing to end. He waited for Gavin to run outside the studio, and then he came in. He got the weapon. He took out the blank cartridges and put in live ammunition. He turned the gun on Gunther and fired. And then he took Gunther's body and he laid it exactly where Gavin had left it. My God. Skylar Whitney. It would seem that all roads point to Mr. Skyler Whitney. I never doubted it. Jody and I just couldn't find all the threads. You see, Sky had to be in the studio that night. How else could he have retrieved his watch? And that's where Sky made his worst mistake. He should never have taken that watch off of Gunther's body. He's had to cover his tracks this ever since. Something I, I still do not understand. What in the world was Gunther doing with that watch in the first place? Gunther said that Skyler gave it to him as a reward for his loyal services. Now, baloney. Sky never gave anything to anybody if he didn't get something in return unless he was forced into it, like blackmail. I agree. I think it had to be blackmail. I mean, Sky would never give that watch to Gunther voluntarily. It was a wedding present from Raven. We'll probably never know exactly how it happened. But Gunther had access to a lot of information about Sky Whitney's daily life and his business dealings. It could have been anything. All right, look, you've got Sky here in the studio, Damien. What then? Now look, Sky went to a lot of trouble to prove to everybody that he was never in this studio. But he had a good reason. He was guilty of murder. Yes, but Gunther wasn't dead when Miles came here. No. But I think that Sky was stopped just short of making certain that Gunther was dead. And that's when Miles came in, in response to Gavin's call for help. Could you uh, recreate that moment for us? Oh, well, I, uh, you know, I just, I came into the studio. I saw Gunther lying on the floor right there. I came over to him and knelt down, tried to help him, and that's, that's when he said something uh, about the watch. Okay, I think Sky Whitney was in the room, and he heard you coming and hid someplace. So obviously, Sky didn't think Gavin would get help so quickly, and he didn't realize that Miles was down at six. No, but what he did realize is that Miles could have saved Gunther, and then Gunther would have been able to name him as the assailant. And while Miles was bent over Gunther's body, Sky came up behind him with a broken cane and knocked him out. Yes, but why? Why this elaborate theatrical scheme of faking Gunther's death first and then actually shooting him? To frame me for the murder, that's why. Exactly. And to kill Gunther. 
Well, it certainly is very convincing, Damien. It explains the difference between Gavin's and my stories, his that the gun was fired at close range, my evidence that it was fired from a distance. How'd you, how'd you come up with this? I mean, what is the third part of the puzzle? Well, before Gunther died, he had written a letter to an ex-girlfriend, which carried some very important information in it. I just, by chance, happened to get access to this letter. How? Well, that's not really important right now, Nicole, but I will read you the most important part of this letter. It says, My boss, Mr. Whitney, is paying me enough money for a lifetime vacation. All I have to do is play a little practical joke on a guy here in Monticello. Now, I'm convinced that that charade that Skye and Gunther played was with Gavin Wiley in this studio. Very clever. Very, very clever. Fortunately, not clever enough. Well, what's the next step? The next step is to convince my chief. Can I have a coffee? Ah, oh, thank you.